Welcome to this info entertainment program from the Information Business Organization. Common sense. Common sense is obvious. Obvious. It's absolutely, absolutely clear. It goes without saying. It goes without saying. It's what you want to hear. What you want to hear. It simply stands to reason. Stands to reason. It only goes to show. It only goes to show. Anyone will tell you. Anyone will tell you. What everybody knows. Everybody knows. Hey, you. This is your host, Professor Daly Wales speaking. As usual, I shall be showing you archive material brought back by our deep space probes and interpreted by computer. And today, we're going to look at an institution many light years away called the University of Strathclyde. Here's what it looked like. <laughs> yes, it is a funny looking place. We're about to see the foundation stone being laid. Remember that this unsifted data could contain propaganda, which may be disturbing to some viewers. <laughs> now here's a difficult answer. Have you ever wanted to ask a difficult question? People in the know use IBO. Try IBO's 101 most popular questions. Information Business Organization. The material you will be exposed to dates from a period before the standardization of all possible questions and answers, and so is unreliable. But first, here are some real facts. The university was in the heart of a city called Scotland in the country of Glasgow. But what was it for? Was it a factory? There was a lot of equipment there, but what was being made? For a long time, we were unable to unearth any trace of a mass product coming out of this place. But we know that factories must make things. And then we saw the truth. The product was looking us straight in the eye. Androids, like me, and of course, you. The prototype population, as everybody knows, were little green men. Early robots or androids only had heads, but later hands were developed, and by the time of pedestrian man, the androids also had legs, which made them difficult to catch. In fact, these university androids were altogether much less predictable than our androids. Androids never argue. We never disobey. We never sleep, we never eat, we work all night and day. In our world, nothing takes long, our world, nothing goes wrong, our world. I was late yesterday, who needs history? I'm broken, I'm progress, the future belongs to our world. Nothing takes long, our world. Nothing goes wrong, our world. Nothing goes wrong. wrong, wrong, wrong. The really powerful people at Strathclyde University were these flat, rectangular life forms called the books. The books were a very quiet race and seemingly immobile. Androids spent a long time with the books, taking them for walks and carrying them back to the shelves where they lived. As we have seen, androids could use their legs, or some of them had wheels, but the books had no legs, wheels or even wings. Of course, the androids could have overthrown the books at any time, but they obviously didn't have the nerve. I found them very easy to eliminate. And now, using computer-generated hologrammatic representations, we're able to give you interviews with some of these androids in our intergalactic phone-in. So, wherever you are, or whatever you are, phone in your questions now. And here's one from Mars. You mean school? <laughs> 
Well, at, at school you only had to remember what the teachers and the textbooks told you. But uh, at university you're really responsible for your own learning. Well, I came here to study microbiology. Um, but for the first couple of years I had to keep on with subjects that I'd done at school which I found a bit frustrating because the course content wasn't as different as I'd expected. But the way in which I study is completely different. Well, I feel that compared with school, there's more choice. I know that when I was in my first year, I had the opportunity of doing politics and psychology, and I couldn't have done those at school. Well, in school, I studied on a daily basis from nine to four, but in university, I plan my work on a monthly basis, like from October to December. <laughs> No, that's not right. I mean, I'm not male and I'm certainly not middle class. Perhaps when you're at school, people are from the same background, but when you go to university, there's people from all different social backgrounds. I mean, there's students who come from overseas and there's people who have been to work before they've, you know, gone to universities. My name is Zahra Saadun. I come from Iraq. I'm studying pharmacology. My name is Hui Bing Hong. I come from Singapore. I'm studying mechanical engineering. My name is Zara Kucheki. I come from Iran. I'm studying bioengineering. I used to work in a shoe shop before I discovered Strathclyde. I was a civil servant till I discovered Strathclyde. I was a library assistant before I came to Strathclyde. I was a policeman. Let's hear it for the policeman. We'll be back after the break. Here's one. What's the difference between a dog? Have you ever been asked an awkward question? Awkward answers are our business. People in the know use IBO. Available now, IBO's 101 most popular answers. Information Business Organization. Now, unlike the books, the androids did not live on shelves, but were stored in lockers. Yes, yes, come into my walk-up. I stayed in the Hall of Residence for my first two years and then moved into a flat in Partick for my third year and then moved into these university flats for my final year. The rooms in which the androids were programmed may seem strange to us. They were called laboratories or lecture theatres or tutorial rooms or gardens. Gardens? You're all studying life sciences, some of you specialising in applied microbiology, food science, biochemistry, as well as biology and biotechnology. But first of all, everyone must do a course in general bioscience, starting with the whole organism and going through the kingdoms right down to the cell level and eventually to the molecular level. And here. Under the microscope, we have some lecture theatres. Imagine this place full of seething bodies, the germs, the noise, the non-standard questions. Non-standard questions were most frequently found in tutorial rooms. Is it not true that the, all the stuff that's studied in universities has be, actually been replaced outside the universities by something else? The universities are just carrying on a tradition that isn't really working outside the universities anymore. Yes, one of the very important things for a university to do is to try and bring together and into some kind of tension and discussion the ways in which the kinds of values of that traditionary, traditional literary culture which are ensconced in many English courses, how you hold those in tension with the kinds of um, uh, pleasures and pitfalls of that popular culture, both, both uh, written and uh, the televisual form. So are you saying that the popular culture should be studied as well? Oh yes, absolutely, yes. Non-standard questions are infectious. What's even worse is this. <laughs> and what about this? <laughs> I do advise viewers to use their common sense spray. Common sense tells us that programming is a serious business. All an android needs is to understand instructions. Now this is what I call well-educated, orderly, stationary, and above all, silent. Common sense. Common sense is obvious. Obvious. It's absolutely, absolutely clear. It goes without saying.
It goes without saying. What you want to hear. What you want to hear. It's fun to run into problems that have no known solutions. It only goes to show. Anyone will tell you. Anyone will tell you. What everybody In science, there are no facts, only theories. You don't need theories. You don't need theories. You don't need books. Use your eyes. You've got eyes in your head. Get out and take a look. Common sense. Common sense, it's easy. Easy. But common sense said that the earth was flat. Me? I'll stand for anything. You can't just There's judge things by their surface appearances. Hey, you! Something's wrong. I can't seem to switch these androids off well. Since they're here, you might as well ask them some questions. Only standard ones, mind you. No, no, universities are not told what to research. Universities are here to encourage a variety of ideas to flourish, even conflicting ones. It's up to society to select from all these ideas and discoveries the ones it wants to develop. As the principal of Strathclyde University, I believe it to be like all good universities. It represents the learning of the past, the understanding of the present, and preparation for the future. We're largely a community of the young, and the young stand for change. We therefore aim to give the young the skills to manage and nurture that change. And the buildings and laboratories are just for that. Change? We don't want change. Anyway, who would dare program androids for change? They'd end up programming themselves. Now, I haven't seen you before, have I? You haven't been to see me? No. Uh, I just came along because uh, people have told me that you deal with student problems and study techniques. Well, tell me a bit about what's bothering you, then. It's the second term. I, I just can't get to grips with it. it. It's not like the first term. The, the second term seems to be... Well, it doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an end. It, it's just becoming uh, shapeless. Well, maybe we should just begin by having a look at your studies. Wh what are you studying, and how do you use your time? Well, sociology and economic history. I, do you want to... I'll show him. There's my timetable. Oh, fine. Well, I think it's fairly obvious that you've got some problems about the way you're using your time. Particularly these slots you've got here between classes in the daytime. I think we should maybe go along and have a look at the material in the study centre on timetabling. Well, if you come over, Barry, you'll see that quite a lot of the material here is about general studying. And in fact, a lot of these books... Ah, have been it's the books again. How to organise your time. Mm. how to monitor what you're doing, how to extend your timetable away from the nine to five day to include evenings and weekends. And then over here, there are some sound tapes. There's one, for instance, on time management. Mm -hmm. You just pop it in. And here on the earphones, you've got the, the commentary. Look, the university teachers who we're in contact with are the people that ideas and knowledge come from. The lecturer who teaches me in class may well be the writer of the books I'm using. I wish it was as easy as that. <laughs> Well, you do get a set of tools, but they're intellectual ones, and you can apply those to any situation and any problem. An android working in a nearby industry, Charles Bow. Hello. Why do I bother? They haven't switched this one on yet. Perhaps he doesn't know who I am. Good afternoon. I am Professor Daily Whale, and you are called Charles Bow. One more try. I'll have another go. You are a product of Strathclyde University, no? No. No? Well, I don't like to think of myself as a product. I was educated at Strathclyde University in applied physics and went on to do postgraduate work. And I then came to this company to do research work in medical lasers. That is to say they programmed you as a medical laser research worker? No. No? I wasn't programmed or trained to be anything. I was educated. Of course I learned about applied physics, but what I really learned about was how to analyze and solve problems in general, and to use the information creatively. 
How long have you been a medical laser research worker? Well, actually, I don't do research anymore. I work in the marketing department now. Marketing? Yes. One of the things that you learn at university is how to be flexible. And this allows you to turn your hand to a variety of things. Oh, I can do that. By the way, you have come from the advertising agency, haven't you? No, no, no. I've come from outer space. I'm investigating the production of androids. Ah, oh, you're looking for androids. Well, we don't have any of these here. All our work is creative. Now, if you don't mind, I've got rather a lot to do. Oh, uh, yes, right. Something illegal is certainly going on here. It's probably to do with this creative business. Meanwhile, back at Strathclyde, a life form is being processed in these jars. Perhaps this is the creative ingredient. <laughs> All universities have links with industry, but this, being a technological university, has particularly strong ones. We've got the Science Park, which we share with Glasgow University, and here companies come in and set up small factories to work on these ideas. But most of our links with industry are research contracts between companies and particular departments, or indeed individuals in the departments. These may be consultancies, they may be tasks, we use our specialised equipment for the companies, or they may simply be collaborative research. And at the present time, our collaborative research grants total 11 million pounds. How did he get online? Interrupting investigations. Anyway, there is some evidence that the universities were independent of industries or government programmes. So, many different varieties of Android were developed in different fields. Here we see a magnetic field to which all students were attracted by powerful iron magnets. But there were also four different fields of study. Arts, science, business and engineering. On so-called open days, anyone could visit these fields. The aim of our arts degree is in fact to encourage people to study things that they like and the arts and social studies subjects should in fact be enjoyable and culturally enriching for life. We should also bear in mind that we aim to examine the values and beliefs of our society and their origins and the way in which change occurs. It is quite important that we turn out people who are flexible and versatile and our degree aims to encourage people to do exactly that. I've often been asked what makes the study of science at Strathclyde University different from that in other universities. There are two possible answers to the question. The first is that we have subjects and departments which are not present in other universities, for example, pharmacy. Secondly, we are much concerned with the application of science. This laboratory is a good example. Our students of chemistry study not only the laboratory preparation of compounds, but the large-scale production of chemical materials as used in the chemical industry. A second example is physics. We are much concerned with the application of lasers in information technology, a new science which is called optoelectronics. It's not generally known that the Strathclyde Business School is the largest in Britain and possibly the largest in Europe. There are over 200 staff on the faculty of our business school teaching in 10 different subject-based departments, ranging from conventional subjects like administration and economics to less common subjects in the curriculum such as marketing and office automation. Also in our business school, it is possible to combine these subjects into a very interesting set of combinations such as, for example, office automation and law or marketing and modern languages or technology and management. We hope that you will be interested in coming to explore the possibilities of studying in our business school. Most disciplines in the university are concerned to record the past or explain the present. In the Faculty of Engineering, however, we are concerned with man-made futures. The scale of engineering design ranges from the locking of simple components to the docking of lunar craft in deep space. The challenge now is to introduce a whole new 
generation of design aids which can be put at the disposal of those who choose to participate in the design of the future. Well, those were the four fields of... Hello, what's this? As Professor of Business Administration in the Strathclyde Business School, and also as a Commissioner for the Equal Opportunities Commission, I would greatly like to see more girls coming to the university to study non-traditional subjects such as engineering, technology, science and management. These are subjects in which there are excellent job opportunities and career prospects for women. Whatever have we got now? Oh, yeah. It seems that the androids were allowed to get together and arrange some programs for themselves. We have been unable to understand what these programs were about. The union will exist to represent the students of the university. We represent the students to the university itself and to, to the various government bodies. We also exist to, to run our own affairs. It's a form of self-government for the students who come here. Um, we have our own communications network, our own newspaper, um, various other organs of, of communication, our own TV set. -up. I realise that next year's increase in the student grant is only going to be the equivalent of one gallon roll per day. Yeah, it's really terrible. 4% rise never really covers the increase that you're going to have in rent. We also run our own entertainments and bars and, and catering facilities. One of the major reasons being that because we, we are young folk, things change quite rapidly and we need to keep the university and other bodies up to date with what young folk think. The androids seem to have run their own shop where they could buy materials needed for their programs or even a new skin. Bright lights fascinated them and they organised trips to go and see them. There was also a place for a smaller kind of android. The normal-sized androids to whom they belonged evidently left them here while they went off to the fields of study or the fields of recreation. But finally, destructive and non-destructive testing was carried out. Everything was tested. Adhesiveness, aerodynamics, propulsion on land, through air and on the water. They also tested electromagnetic fields, elasticity, steering, synchronization, and of course, all kinds of performance in wet weather. Hello? Have you been paying attention? Then you will realize that we do not need any more questions. All questions and answers have been adequately listed in our catalogue of common sense. I suggest you consult yours. Have a nice day. Hello? A question? Yeah, fine. Go ahead. That's him, Kosov. Do not adjust your sets. There is a fault in reality. Normal service is now resumed. Information Business Organization. Hello? Excuse me, can you tell me how to get back to Strathclyde? What? You want to get back to Strathclyde? It's light years away. Mind you, you don't fit in here, do you? Fortunately for you, Strathclyde is one of the fastest moving universities in the universe. Here it comes now. Well, go on, jump. There she goes. Thank goodness, I got rid of her at last. But do you think it could ever really be like that, that education could be so restricted? Not that all universities exist, because I think they've always tried to encourage lots of different ideas. But that depends on the people that come to university and why they come. Mm, that's true. Of course, they think I don't exist. And perhaps I don't. Yet, 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 yet. But then again, who's going to stop me? Strathclyde University needs you. Androids never argue. We never disobey. We never sleep. We never eat. We work all night and day. In our world, nothing takes from our world, nothing goes wrong, our world. I was made yesterday, who needs history? I'm programmed for progress, the future belongs. 